now you've got to have three chords, the truth, a red guitar, and TikTok. So shut the up. I started writing, well, I started scripting this video, um, and then I just thought, you know, it's not just not going to come across in the same way. So I thought I'd just press record, see what comes out, and hopefully it's not a garbled rant. Although I've I've got a feeling it might be a garbled rant, but it's all meant with love and from the heart. Um, so if you don't know me, my name's Damien. I work with, with artists across the world and artists that are, tr are releasing music, trying to build a fan base. Um, and no, no matter what size of artist, from someone who's releasing their first single through to someone who's on album number five and has hundreds of thousands of followers, through to different genres, doesn't matter what genre, it doesn't matter what style of artist, what skill set. Every artist, I think, has one thing in common or one thing you have in common, which is a massive lack of patience, which leads into a huge amount of anxiety. And I am not an anxious person. I feel like I'm quite a practical person and I don't really have that much anxiety. But when I work with lots of artists, I feel like I'm handed anxiety like some kind of unwanted, shitty Christmas gift from grandma. And I'm like, I feel, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I feel anxious. And I'm like, I'm not really an anxious person. But, and by the way, can I just preface this before I go into anything? Everything I say in this video, I know I'm going to have like 50, 100, 150 messages from different artists, and they're just going to be all like, was this about me? <laughs> like, which goes to show how many artists this affects, because I think this is everybody, and I think this is this needs to be tackled because this is this is the biggest career killer I think I've seen, and that's lack of patience. and And so everything I say in this is is about every artist, and and, it, and it's it's how I feel. But I think the lack of patience, and not just the lack of patience, but the lack of priorities and lack of patience, means what artists tend to do is they throw shit at the wall, so they just kind of go, I haven't got time. There's this. The bit I always get when I'm brought in is I'm on a I'm on a fail from the start because it's unachievable goals and unachievable results in an unachievable amount of time. I want everything. When do I want it? Now. And because I watch TikTok and everything's in 10 seconds, I've also understand that I can get anything I want whenever I want it, but I want it now. And I'm like, already I'm like, oh, so now I'm feeling anxious <laughs> because all of a sudden I'm like, well, we've got work to do. So... A big part of this for me is throwing stuff at the wall. I see artists throw stuff at the wall. So I, I start looking and social media is for me is, is the starting point. Like everyone, I find it really weird when people go, oh, you're the social media guy. And I'm like, no, it's just social media is just a big, it's a big part of, of marketing. It's a big part of like of discovery and, and, and building the audience and community and those sorts of things. But when it comes to that, I look in people's socials, I'm looking at Instagram, for example, and I just see just so much shit thrown at the wall. And I'm like, we tried this, we tried this, we tried this. And then when I'm talking to them, I'm like, we tried that, it didn't work. And I'm like, whoa, calm it down. Like, if we are trying to make this work, if there's like a, if there's a time scale that I'm not, aware, I'm, not, I'm not aware about, if there's like a, the world is about to end in 30 days, and therefore we have to do everything in 30 days, then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I can feel the anxiety. But I'm like... When you've been doing this for five, six, seven years, what do you think you're going to achieve in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days? Like, it's a long, a long period of time that we're trying to build something. Uh, like, an example of this is, is recently we were working with an artist, are working with an artist now, but we were working with an artist, and when we picked them up, the numbers were just going backwards. You know, you go on Social Blade and it was just red number after red number after red number. And it, it took months, like months and months and months to get to the point where we were like, this is really starting to work now. Like, and, and during that month, and then it was like the exponential growth and from that exponential growth allowed that artist to sign a major label deal. But the, the, the months and months were painstaking. They were like, it, it's failure after failure. It's it's tweak after tweak. It's optimization after optimization. It's trying different things. But when you throw everything at the wall and just go, Bleh, and then just go, eh, it didn't work. I'm like, what do you think is going to work? Like, if you just throw shit at the wall, that's not the way you improve. Like, that's just not the way it works. And so we need structure. We need routine. And I think the frustrating thing for me is I'm looking at artists going, I tried a thing. And... 
instead of just saying, hang on, what does trying the thing mean? Does it mean we tried it several times whilst improving 1% a day over a period of 20 to 30 days to see if that worked and then go again. No, of course it doesn't. It means we chucked out a TikTok and we tried short form or we tried a long form or we tried, we tried putting a hook in and it's like, come on, like, it's so difficult. You're setting yourself up to fail day after day after day. And there is no, like nobody can come in and, and do that much there isn't like a toggle switch i think i think people think that there's like oh if you go into the settings by the way if you just i don't know if you missed this but if you click this button oh yeah there you go you've gone from 200 views to 500,000 views did you not know about the button oh well everything's great good luck being taylor swift like it's, it's like it's unrealistic and we're trying to we're trying just to put it into perspective of what we are trying to achieve Right, we are not trying to go, I'm trying to perfect how to make scrambled eggs. We are trying to conquer the most difficult industry, I would say, probably in the world. Like, the toughest industry. When people are like, there's 100,000 songs being released every single day. And major labels and every other label are putting billions and billions and billions of dollars over a period of time into artists. And, you know, they are coming up with the best writers and the best videographers and the best hooks and the best people... And meanwhile, you've got like, you know, Jeff from, from But Fuck Nowhere who goes, well, what I have got is a song and I've got a TikTok account. And luckily, I've got the brand new iPhone 16. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm not saying it can't be done because that's our job. But like, let's at least have some perspective of, of the time this is going to take. <laughs> like, You've got an iPhone, a song. In DistroKid, TuneCore, and Spotify, and a bunch of uh, other DSPs, and what we have to do is we have to go and see if we can take over the world and make people adore you and love you and and like you so much that they're going to listen to your music, sign up to your email list, come to your gig, buy your merch, and it's like that's really hard. And I go, yeah. And you know what? It's already Tuesday. <laughs> My fuck me, so difficult. So. I think that's the perspective. The priorities then are what's the most important thing, right? And to me, the most important thing is artistry. And you've heard, you know, for a lot of you, you've heard me say this before. The most important thing is not social. Social is just a shop window. Like, it, that's how we're going to get discovery. That's how we're going to build you up. But we have to take some responsibility here. Like, when we were working with said artist that I said about, we tried so many songs. Like this idea of like, I've written a song or I've got a new single, like that's the answer. It's like, we might have to try 30 songs or 40 songs. And if you say, well, hang on, each song's going to cost me three, four, five thousand dollars or pounds to, to produce. I can't make 20, 30, 40 songs. We go, okay, fine. We have to find another way, but just to let you know, it gets harder. It's tougher. So therefore, we might have to do demo versions. We might have to do live versions. We might have to try these things because we are not in control of of the audience's subjectivity of what they love. And so therefore, the, the audience, do you know what? The audience might love you. They might, do you know, they might see it every single day. You pop up and they might just go, God, I love your voice. And you know, what? I love you. I think you're such a great person and you, I connect with you so much. It's amazing. But they might also think your song is shit. <laughs> they might go, but not that song. In the same way as like when we're dealing with merch. I was dealing with someone the other day with merch, right? They had a, this is where it's getting to a rant, isn't it? They, were, they, they had a, a logo, right? We were talking about the logo. And the logo was basically the entire shirt, right? The whole thing. Like, it was just like, Rah! and I was like, ooh, should we try some, some T-shirts where the logo is, like, small? And they were like, no. No, I want big. Big logo. And I was like, okay. Now, if that doesn't sell, right, just from a fan base point of view, could it be that they still love you, but your T-shirt is shit, right? Because there is. Like, what we want to do with a t-shirt or with merch or with a brand design is we want the people who go, I don't give a shit about you, but I love your t-shirt because they'll buy it. We want the people who say, do you know what? I love you, but I'm not buying that t-shirt. We want them to say, oh, well, let's, let's, let's buy the t-shirt, not because I feel I should support you, but I'm buying the t-shirt because I like the t-shirt. And so is there a chance that they, don't, they like you and they don't like the song? Yeah. And is there a chance that the song's really good and the social shit? Yeah. And pr does production matter? Yeah. It does. And so what do we need to do? It means we need to have a very simple strategy. When I first started being a bass player, 
I went to music college and my mentor said to me, like, the genius is in the attention to detail, right? And this is the way it works. Genius is playing the simplest of things to the highest level, right? It's not how fast you can play or anything. It's basically who plays the simplest thing the best, right? And I remember this guy came in. He was called John J.R. Robinson. He's like, he came into the college. He's like, he was one of the most recorded session drummers. And just so you know, this is the guy who plays the drums on Billy, uh, Billy Jean, right? I cannot play drums, but I can play Billy Jean, right? I can do that, right? But this guy, when he played it, everyone was like, oh, it's just a it's just a four four. But when he played it, everyone was like, oh my god, that sounds so good. That's why he's one of the most recorded session drummers in the world. Because we can all play four four, but when he does it, it's better than us. And so we have to take this into socials. The idea of going, well, I've got a song and I'm an artist, so I'm going to make a piece of content and therefore everyone should love me is stupid. Like, it's it's unrealistic. What we've got to do is we've got to painstake. In the same way as you've painstake, painstake over the lyrics, over the subject matter, over the chords, over the arrangement, over the mix, over the master, and then we just sh chuck any old shit out on, on TikTok or Instagram. No. We have to go and make a hundred pieces of content and in every single one, we don't ask why it hasn't worked. We ask, how do I make the next one better? Yes, I'm in 200 view prison. Fine, like get out of 200 view prison. We can do that. That's no problem at all. We have to play a certain game. Let's start looking at what's the difference. Have you, have you started to improve your videography skills? Because there's millions of YouTube videos that we can do that. Have you started working on your editing skills? Have you started working on your color grading skills? Have you started thinking about hooks? Have you, have you, experimented with making a 10 to 13 second piece of content rather than this idea that you have to go and make a minute and a half because it's your song and narcissistically we think that everyone needs to hear the, the whole song in the first first time they've met you like all of these things we need to think about and we need to test them because maybe you can make a one and a half minute TikTok and everyone's going to just fall at your feet but the chances are probably not so therefore we have to try and test and go again with this idea of like just the simple stuff before we start throwing everything out there let's just take some time and improve the artistry and let's say hang on we might have to do lots of songs and then we might also have to do lots of pieces of content and we might have to improve those pieces of content we have to, might have to go again and again and when people are like you know like every, every day like fucking tiktok sucks <laughs> so who cares like that's not the point the point is you've got good music you believe in your music and at the moment nobody gives a shit so therefore how do we get them to give a shit? We have to put it in a shop window that they go, ooh, look at that. I didn't really give a shit, but I like that. What's that shop window? Well, right now it probably is TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. It just is. And if you go, well, I've got half a million dollars, then great. Then spend it on advertising. That's brilliant. That's fantastic. But for most people, it's like, you know, back in that, what was it, the 60s and, and Dylan or Hendrix and they were like, all I've got is this red guitar, three chords and the truth. Yeah, well, this is 2024, mother So now you've got to have three chords, the truth, a red guitar and TikTok. So shut the up. Like, it's, come on, excuse my language, getting ranty. But I feel like right now, the thing that's killing off artists is the fact that you're sometimes so close and then all of a sudden you just turn the corner like a fly. Like it's like, oh, we're getting somewhere. Oh, we just changed. Why did we change? We were doing really well, we changed. And then it's like, okay, well actually this is starting to, oh, we've changed again. Oh, we've changed, oh, we've cha we keep changing. Instead of going, no, no, improving. Let's improve, let's not change. Like whether you talk, whether you listen to my YouTube or a bunch of the other people who do a similar kind of thing to me, we're all saying very similar things. It's about having the strategy that we think works for the most amount of people and so therefore i think the way that we do things i think it works but they'll all work in their own way but they'll also only work if your skill sets there if you're if you're if you're good at what you do if you improve if you if you spend the time if you're consistent if all of the things that you put in otherwise no one's a magician it's not going to work so we just have to think about patience and the anxiety that people have because they've got a song and they need to be Coldplay in by 2025 and it's September <laughs> I'm like come on Let, let's just look at infrastructure let's look at improvement do you know what I want to do 
like I'll start to round this off, but this is what I want, right? When I start working with you on your socials or with you as an artist, I don't give a shit about the numbers, if I'm honest. And do you know what I really don't give a shit about? This is a weird thing. Don't tell everyone. I don't give a shit about your streaming numbers. Because I'm like, that's an outcome. I want your streaming numbers to be a billion on every song. But I'm not focusing on your streaming numbers. You get paid fucking half a cent. You don't even get paid that for a stream. You get thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of streams every hour to make this work. I don't care about that. I care about you. I care about the opportunities. I care about when someone just goes, hey, this is good. That's what I care about. Because when someone goes, bloody hell, this is good. Now we can open up for opportunities. Because when someone says, this is good, we can scale this is good. And if we can scale this is good, we can get opportunities out of this is good. If we can get opportunities out of this is good, we can get money out of this is good. And if we can get money out of this is good then all of a sudden, we're building the community, we've got infrastructure, we understand what works, we've got people who genuinely love what you do and they will pay, and, and it's not like this capitalistic, like, just about the money. No, it's like, people want to buy things for you because they love you, that's a good sign. And because of all of those things happening, Spotify will take care of itself, as will all of the, the other DSPs. What I care about is when someone goes, this is really, really good because that's when the industry cares. That's when promoters cares. That's when live agents cares. That's when people message you and go, hey, do you want to do a collab with me? Because people go, this is good. This is good is not just a video on TikTok. This is good is because you are good, because you are better, because your production's better, your songwriting's better, your arrangement's better, your style is better, your, your, um, your mixing's better, your mastering's better, your storytelling's better, your hooks are better, like all of it. It's everything. And what we've got to do is work on the priorities and work on the most important things. And so please, please, like, can we think about not failing for 10 years? Can we think about, what if I said to you, right, three years, right? Let's really go for it for three years. Like, I can't imagine saying that to an artist right now. And if I was just like, right, we're in like 2024. Let's like, let's really push it every single day and not really think about anything, but really push it every day until 2027. They'd be, they'd be, go I'd be like, hello? 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 <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? 2027? I'm, I'm going to give you till October. <laughs> it's too stupid. Like, let's start thinking about and then what happens is they go and fail for 10 years, doing the same thing again and again and again, instead of going, look, it's going to be a tough two to three years, but we're going to get there because we're going to work on the right things again and again and again and, and not fail long term. Like, can we do that? Can we have some patience? Can we stop this anxiety? Like, anxiety seems to come from the burnout of social media. No, anxiety comes from you putting stupid, re unrealistic achievements, unrealistic goals and unrealistic timeframes. That's what anxiety comes from. Like, if you went, you've got to go and run a marathon, you're like, oh, that's hard. Yeah, and you've got 20 minutes. <laughs> like, oh, well, I can't do that. Oh, now it's anxious, isn't it? Stupid. Right, that's my rant. I'm going. I'm going to leave you to it. Please, let's stop with the, let's stop with the impatience. Let's actually start thinking of this as a marathon. And let's start thinking of the journey. And let's start thinking about improving. Let's start thinking of what does good look like and how do we repeat good? How do we scale it? And how do we make something that you are proud of that people will say, that's really good. You got a lot better because if we could do that, we can scale it. And from there, that's what numbers come from instead of just hacking the algorithm. Let's stop worrying about that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry, it's a bit, a bit of a rant, but I feel like I need to get it off my chest. So even if it's just for my catharticness, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much, and I'll uh, see you again soon.